Gwenther Steiner, has finally told on Jean Haas and everything else about the behind-the-scenes drama going on. The unexpected exit of Steiner from Haas added some spice to the early weeks of the 2024 Formula One season. He spilled the details during his first public appearance at the Autosport International Show last weekend. This is Formula One's breakup of the year, and it's about time for us to understand what's going on, so don't go anywhere. Following a lively on-stage Q&A, complete with an impromptu book signing, alongside Sky Sports F1 TV commentator David Croft in front of an enthusiastic crowd at the National Exhibition Centre in Birmingham, Steiner opened up in his first media interviews post his departure from the team he founded in 2014 on behalf of owner Jean Haas. Ahead of a televised conversation with Sky Sports News reporter Craig Slater, Steiner exclusively shared his side of the story in a sit-down with Autosport. In his inaugural comprehensive and extended interview, the 58-year-old delved into the reasons behind his departure from Haas, shedding light on the challenges of not being able to bid a personal farewell to the team staff. He elaborated on why he harbours no bitterness about the situation and shared insights into his reflections on the future of his journey in Formula One. Yet, he candidly discussed specific incidents that unfolded during his decade-long tenure at the team. According to Steiner, these events deserve a reconsideration, just as he suggests re-evaluating the subpar results that Gene Haas pointed to as the primary rationale for not extending his contract as the team's founding principal. After disclosing during his onstage Q&A that Gene Haas had unexpectedly conveyed the news of not extending his contract, which was set to conclude in 2023, through an out-of-the-blue phone call between Christmas and New Year, Steiner shared his immediate reaction to the revelation. In the end, he said, the contract was up, and for me it's like it always was. If it doesn't work, just let me know. I'm not hung on anything. Gene Haas owns the team and obviously has got the right to decide what he wants to do. Simple as this. If he doesn't want me around, I'm not around. That's all right. Let's move on. I'm not running, and in a rush for the next job, I'm chilled. Although not placed on gardening leave after departing from Haas, as his contract wasn't terminated, but rather not renewed, Steiner is currently believed to be subject to an anti-competition signing arrangement, a temporary measure that can be implemented. This situation contrasts with the non-working scenarios that F1 team staff might find themselves in when they commit to joining another team before officially leaving their current squad. This is the reason why, when questioned about the possibility of a hypothetical offer from Christian Horner, for a return to Red Bull this week, and if he could accept such an offer, Steiner responded with a firm no. It's worth noting that neither side has officially confirmed the existence of the anti-competing clause. With the unexpected revelation that Steiner won't be making a comeback with Haas and the appointment of Ayao Komatsu, the team's former director of engineering and chief race engineer, as the new team principal, understanding the sequence of events leading up to Gene Haas's Christmas phone call becomes crucial. The 2023 campaign for Haas turned out to be a debacle, marked by the VF23 car experiencing tyre overheating issues. This predicament rendered drivers Nico Hulkenberg and Kevin Magnussen mostly ineffective in defending their favourable grid positions, particularly those secured by Hulkenberg. The team's strong qualifying performances were largely attributed to the unique tyre situation, offering a performance boost over a single lap. Haas became the final team to adopt Red Bull's downwash side pod concept, introducing a substantial development package during its second of three home races last year, the United States Grand Prix in Austin. But, as it became evident in the following races that these modifications had minimal impact on Haas's performance, the concluding two months of the 2023 season, along with its last rounds, now carry a different significance. Steiner seemed to have a secure position through the Austin and Mexico rounds. However, it was the team's 10th place finish and the accompanying $20 million prize money in the Abu Dhabi finale that Gene Haas pointed to as the catalyst for the top management change. Steiner reflected on this pivotal moment in the final stretch of the 2023 campaign. 
I think because the performance went down, obviously nobody is happy. There is nobody more unhappy than me. But we were faced with a situation that we couldn't recover this year, 2020, and the aim was to do something for racing for 2024. I wouldn't say it. His relationship with Gene Haas in this period went downhill. It was just like, we tried to work hard, that you do your best. But you know, obviously the performance wasn't good enough, and then change needed to be made. That was what Gene Haas thought about it. When questioned about whether the unsuccessful upgrade was the factor that influenced Gene Haas in making his decision, Steiner responded, I don't know, you need to ask him that. I think it was very clear that if you do something, a concept change as quick as we did, that to make a big leap is very difficult, especially because you've got underlying design features that you cannot change anymore at this late stage. But I think for the technical guys, it was a good way to go in that direction, to learn for 2024. Insiders have hinted that the delay in Steiner's decision-making regarding Haas's 2023 development plan, seen in light of the team's ongoing challenge in addressing its in-race tyre degradation issue in the middle part of the year, contributed to the late introduction of side pod alterations, as well as changes to the engine cover bodywork and floor in the latter stages of the campaign. The Austin upgrade came five months after both Mercedes and Ferrari had already made comparable moves, aligning with the development path set by Red Bull at the beginning of the current ground effect era. The technical partnership between the latter squad and Haas, involving shared listed parts, resulted in the two cars having a very similar aerodynamic profile. However, in Formula One, a substantial car overhaul occurring so late in a season is a rare occurrence. Steiner expressed regret over the delayed decision for the significant change, saying, Absolutely, it was a little bit late. I would say, if I could go back, that's what we should have done, made the car changes earlier. Obviously now with hindsight, it's obvious. I mean, it was change. But then, it was not enough time anymore to do it good. When it was discovered that there was no performance in the old in-wash concept anymore. Obviously, as you said, Ferrari, they changed quicker, and we tried to hang on maybe a little bit too long to the old concept. When questioned about his desire to continue as team principal, Steiner responded cautiously, considering his current restricted situation, saying, I was not saying I want to leave. Put it this way. Steiner's further reflections on his perspective regarding his future in the top role at the Haas F1 squad provide revealing insights. It revolves around his desire for Gene Haas to allocate more resources to enhance the team's core infrastructure under F1's cost cap. Haas faces challenges in making research and development efficiency gains as it pays for many pre-developed parts from Ferrari. In his only public statement on the current situation, shared with F1's official website, Gene Haas said something that made it clear that he was clashing with Steiner regarding the team's direction. He said, I can't understand how we can be last in the Constructors' Championship with all the equipment and people we have. I've never been in a company this long as I was in Haas F1. Think about that. At some stage, the long-term future gets considered. You know, doing more of the same and seeing what other people do to move forwards. Like all the other teams, like Alpha Tori, Aston Martin, you see where they are going, and you cannot go with them. It's difficult to stay motivated. You always try because you never give up. You try, but at some stage, obviously, it becomes clear that it becomes more clear when you're gone because you are not in the whirlwind anymore. You are outside, and you look in, and you say, Wow, I pushed for a long time, seeing where other people are going since the budget cap in for 2021. Formula One has changed since the budget cap came in place. The reaction of people was like, you need to think different. You need to invest in your infrastructure to get the best out of your operational budget. You just need to be very efficient. You need to put the money in, setting everything up that you've got a very lean machine. You always push to do that. Because I think our transferable parts purchasing concept was very good when we started, but then when the budget cap came, it just changed a little bit. And our model is maybe not the most efficient anymore. Well, not our model, their model, because I'm not there anymore. Steiner firmly denied any suggestion of a falling out with Gene Haas, saying, I wouldn't say I fell out with Gene. I don't fall out. I don't need to fall out with anybody. Because he owns the place, he can decide what he wants. I cannot fall out with him. I can be upset, 
but I'm not even upset. It's his decision, and he can do what he wants. But I think the results, results are always the product of how you can achieve the results. And if you cannot achieve them with what you have got, the results are just the end product, which is not good. Speculation has arisen that Gene Haas's recent moves at the helm of his F1 team might be part of a strategy to sell the squad. Insiders within the team have hinted that the machine tool magnate could potentially recoup his initial investment and even turn a profit, given the significant surge in the worth of F1 teams in recent years. Steiner's reaction to this? I have no idea what he wants to do, and it's actually not my problem. Which is good, you know? Does anyone else read the tension between the lines? I know I do. Before we part ways today, I want to hear your thoughts. Do you think Gunther Steiner's firing is justified? Or is Gene Haas's train of thought going off the rails? Tell us your answer in the comments section down below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Thanks for watching.